everyone welcome back to another of my Friday Sews episodes this week I've got a pattern to show you some upcycling I've got a challenge reveal and I've got a couple of adjustments so although my kids are off for the holidays um, I've actually got quite a bit to talk about so I'll firstly start with the pattern so I watch Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room she's actually the wonderful lady that came up with this Friday Sews idea for our videos and I love watching her videos. She did a video a little while back of a dress that she'd made and it was this dress by a pattern company I'd not heard of called Marcy Tilton and I saw the dress and I found the copy which was quite difficult I don't know if it's not very common in the UK uh, but I managed to found, find the pattern and I had it a while back and I was going to share it with you, <laughs> except that I didn't actually realise, and I don't know if you'll see, but this comes in two different sizes. So this is extra small, small, medium, and then you've got large, extra large and XXL. And I ordered the slightly large one by mistake. And in actual fact, I needed this one. So I managed to de-stash that pattern to a lady who did want it. And then I managed to find the correct size. And that is this dress here. I really like the different sort of styling. I'll probably have to put a photo in because I'm sure this won't show. But if you can see from the line drawings, it's got some really cool features with the pockets being really huge and then it's got like sweeping lines and you could do color blocking um i will put jen's review that she did for this dress in the links below so you'll be able to go and check out her fabulous version but yeah i really like this and um i think i'll be keeping an eye out for more marcy tilton patterns in the future i actually managed to get this one i think it was from minerva so that was the first thing i wanted to tell you and then also this week, I have been watching in the last few weeks, The Fabulous Hales, and she's Hales More Sewing. Again, I'll link channel down below. She's been doing a massive declutter of um, not only her sewing room, I think, but her entire house. And when I was watching, I thought, yeah, that's something <laughs> that I need to do. So I regularly think I need to declutter. And it seems no matter how many times I clear stuff out, just seems to accumulate again doesn't it it's mad so she did her wardrobe and got rid of things that she hadn't worn or even makes you know that again she didn't really reach for time and time again and I was prompted to have a look in my wardrobe which I knew was just rammed full of stuff now I moved here to Plymouth three and a half years ago and when I was looking in my wardrobe a lot of the clothes in that wardrobe have not been touched since we moved here <laughs> so I think that's a fairly good indicator that I am not going to wear them so I had a massive curl but one thing I did find while I was having this curl were a few things that I wanted to upcycle I've got a bag of stuff but I did get round to one and um, it is this now I will have to pop in a photo um, of me wearing this in editing because I don't currently have a photo but I had a dress in my 20s from Monsoon, which um, is quite expensive to me. I've got a feeling my mum might have bought me this. <laughs> but it was a gorgeous summer maxi dress. However, as I was in my 20s, I think it was like a size 8. And um, it has languished in my wardrobe wherever we have lived since, since I had it and wore it for a few summers. I haven't wear, worn it for a good 20, 25 years, but I absolutely love, and I'm hoping you'll be able to see this, this fabric. Um, I'm not even sure what these prints are, like blue flowers or whatever, but at the bottom, it's got this absolutely gorgeous border, and it's also got, I don't know if you'll be able to see, I'll probably put those little um, sequins occasionally, and it's a little bit of um, like an added... Uh, Oh my God, words escape me. Tear, <laughs> tear, that's what it is. Uh, which of course is very popular at the moment. And this is maxi length, which hopefully if I've got photos, you'll be able to see. Now, because it was a halter dress, a halter neck dress, um, that was the problem. I could not get this top back on because there's no chance of me being a size eight. So 
what I did realise was that um, if I cut the top off, it actually was a little bit gathered and it had enough fabric then in this waist for me to put in a channel and some elastic. So it's not very um, flared because obviously it's a size eight. So it hasn't got a huge amount of fabric in it. But I really like how it's turned out. And like I say, I literally just cut off the top bit, which was the halter that never was going to fit me. And then when the gathers came apart, I made a like a one and a quarter inch channel and popped in the elastic that fits my waist. And so now I've got this really gorgeous maxi length summer skirt. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm really happy because that literally has just been taking up space in my wardrobe for decades. So thanks, Hales. Thanks to you. I actually have the skirt I will wear now as opposed to a dress that I will just stare at. <laughs> so that was the other thing I did uh, this week. But the main thing I've been doing this week is the Crafty So-and-So over on Instagram have been doing a challenge and it is the hashtag Crafty PJ Party. And I think it's in a lead up to uh, this weekend where they're having a lovely sewing retreat for the weekend. I know a few of my friends are going and I hope they have a wonderful time. And the party is, the reveal is today, and I'm guessing they're going to do stuff at the sewing weekend. So all this week there's been prompts showing your fabric, I think, and your favourite sewing or midnight snack, your favourite beverage, your favourite detail. And I've been following on with all of those. So if you want to see what mine were for those prompts, do go check out my Instagram if you haven't already pop it down here for you below and um, today is the reveal so I will pop in photos of my reveal I've already revealed them on Instagram so there's no spoilers and yeah I'm really happy with how they've turned out so this fabric is just gorgeous I honestly can't remember I think I may have got it from a D stash but look at those lovely sleepy raccoons and um, yeah it's just well, it had to be pyjamas, didn't it? When it says Bon Nuit, it can't be anything else. So um, my little pyjama set is a t-shirt and it is a pair of shorts as well with pockets. <laughs> so I made the till in the buttons two patterns. The top is the Tabitha T and that is from her recent Make It Simple book. And the shorts are the Stella Joggers from her stretch book, but I cut them at short. Now, any of you that have been following me, I mentioned, I think on Instagram, I'm not sure if here on YouTube, that I was planning to make my PJ set with the Tabitha T, but with the sleep shorts from Halla Patterns, which is a free pattern that if you join their Facebook group, you can get. Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this pattern at all. And I will be making it again in the future. So these are the Halla patterns you will see not finished. And the reason for that, they do not fit. <laughs> so I double checked and it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which I did do, which I thought was quite tiny. Um, but because I wanted to use this fabric, I didn't even think about checking what the fabric requirements were. And when I looked back at the uh, glossary for the fabrics, they recommend a four-way stretch, which this is not, and 50% stretch, which this is definitely not. So <laughs> this was absolutely the wrong fabric. And there was no way that these shorts were ever going to be <laughs> my pyjama shorts. Luckily for me, I have a 10 year old daughter so that is why I've left the waistband off because I'm going to measure her waist and pop in elastic and she's going to have those so they're not wasted which I'm happy about but that is why I did the Stella joggers so note always check what fabric it recommends especially when doing stretch because 50% stretch and four way there was no way this was ever going to work and if I'd bothered to read that I would have known that before I made them up to the stage of adding the waistband. So I absolutely loved making these pyjamas. They're the kind of pyjamas I wear because they're just t-shirt shorts, which is me, basically. I made a couple of alterations to the Tabitha, which I will show you. Okay, so the first one was not major. In fact, neither of them are major. 
I find that quite often um, some of Tilly's patterns come quite high on my neck and I've made a few Tabithas in the past and I found that they were just a little bit too high for my liking so I literally dropped the neckline by I think an inch and just recut the pattern and then obviously re-measured the neckline to make the neckband and I always do that depending on the fabric at about 75 to 80 percent of the length of the neckband and that worked perfectly. Now the other one I made is to the shoulders so I make a size 5 um, because of the bust measurement however I found with my previous Tabithas that the shoulder point instead of sitting on the shoulder was quite a little bit off and I don't think it's meant to be a drop shoulder pattern so with this one I made a narrow narrow shoulder adjustment so what is one of those you may well ask well I didn't know <laughs> I'd never done one before however I picked up this fabulous oh sewing book by Alison Smith and this I think is a previous version so the cover may look slightly different but she has this available and it has everything you can imagine in it about um, pattern adjustments, sewing, seams, everything. <clears throat> it's like a little bible for sewing and it has a narrow shoulder adjustment in its list of uh, shoulders, back and sleeves, all sorts of adjustments. So I followed its um, adjustment for narrow shoulders and I will show you hopefully you'll be able to see if not I'll pop in photos so this is my pattern piece and you may well be able to see but I did a line halfway along the shoulder point down to about a third of the way up uh, the armhole then did a straight line across to join and then I cut down that line and across just stopping about at the seam allowance so I had a little hinge so I could move this bit of fabric and then I only wanted to make like a half inch adjustment. So all you do then is you get this little piece that's on a hinge, moved it across the shoulder a half an inch, and then I taped it down. And obviously you then have to level up the shoulder, the new shoulder piece and filled in the gap with a little bit of paper. So my new pattern piece, and obviously do that on the back pattern piece as well, so they match, um, has a half inch shorter and um, hopefully I've put in the photos if not I'll get some more that meant then that this sat really nicely and didn't hang off my shoulder and I was really pleased because just changing the neckline slightly and the shoulder which took no time at all um, made it the perfect fit so a couple of other things that I will just quickly say before I sign off for this video I don't know if you can see these very well so I may have to put in a photo so I went out for lunch with a couple of friends this week and we went to a place here called Royal Williams Yard and that just happens to be where my favourite fabric shop is, which I don't need to tell you, that is Make at 140 down here. So we popped in, of course, it would be rude not to. <laughs> um, however, Lizzie, who owns and runs the shop, started out her business um, making button jewellery and she still does, fabulous button jewellery. However, I was wearing the New Look 6217, which I made in this fabric for our lunch. And I noticed these button earrings on her display, which I'm hoping you can see, like I say, I'll put in a photo, are the exact same colours. Can you believe it? I know Lizzie says she can make jewellery any colour specification you like, but she didn't need to because these match the three colours in my top. So, I mean, that was just amazing. So, of course I bought them and I'm really chuffed with them. So that was a little purchase I made um, when I went to have lunch. And the other thing I've started is my Hunter Tank, which is a Jennifer Lauren handmade top. I haven't got very far yet. All I've done so far is cut out the pattern and I've chosen this gorgeous dotty fabric, which I think will make a lovely Hunter Tank. I have watched Sean of the Kittenish Behaviours video, which she does a full lining of the hunter tank which actually if you use two different fabrics means you can make it reversible which i think is fabulous i'm going to try that out because this is my first one but i will pop shan's video again linked below for you if you want to go and look so um hopefully that'll be coming up soon i can't say when 
you know me because I make plans and then I don't do them. So at some point <laughs> I will make that hunter tank. And that's about it. That's all I've got for you guys for this week. I hope you're all having a wonderful week, whatever you are doing. And I will see you all in my next video.